Hello, God bless you. I welcome you to today's communion and anointing service. I am David Eidbonner, and this is David Eidbonner Ministries. I'm going to be opening the service with a brief time of prayer with you. Thereafter, I will start teaching and preaching, and then we would take our communion and I would pray on the anointing oil. And that will be the end of the service. Today I am going to be ministering under the topic, on the topic, do not excuse sin. Do not excuse sin. I encourage you to stay on. Right? We're going to be discussing do not give excuses for sin. It is important that you stay till the end of the service. There's a lot that is coming your way. Let us begin by giving God thanks. Let us praise him for his goodness and for his wonderful works towards us. I want you to speak to the Lord right now. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for what he has done in your life. Thank him. Thank him. For the events of yesterday, of today, of last week, just give him thanks. Father, we thank you for another time of fellowship, another time to hear your word, another time to be blessed. We thank you, Lord God, for we are gathered unto you from various nations and all continents to worship you together in spirit and in truth. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. May your name be glorified. Oh, Lord, may our praise arise as incense. May our prayers arise before you as incense. Lord, hear our prayers and rain down the blessings, rain down the answers upon us. We pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for our going out and our coming in, for the activities of today, the activities of days before and weeks and months and years before. We thank you, Lord God, for where we are going. We are grateful for your interest in us and investment in us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for not looking at our failures. We are grateful in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to thank the Lord for the blessings coming. What you have prayed for, give him thanks now for it. Give him thanks ahead for what you have prayed for. Speak to him. You may not have seen it yet, but give him thanks that it is coming. Give him thanks. Believe that what you have asked for, he's, he has granted it. And then thank him. Thank him. For your family. Thank him. Give him thanks. I want you to ask the Lord to remove from your heart bitterness and unforgiveness. Ask him to remove bitterness and unforgiveness from your heart. Say, Lord, rid me of bitterness and unforgiveness. Pray right now. You may have been hurt. The Bible says it is impossible that offenses will not come. So it is expected that you will be offended. You will be hurt by people. Some of them are people you have even done so much for. That the least you expect from them is what you are getting. Talk to the Lord. Pray, ask him to uproot bitterness from your heart, unforgiveness. And you should fill your heart with his love. Speak to him right now. Speak to the Lord. The Bible says, if you do not forgive, God will not forgive you. So it is not worth it going to hell. For somebody who you don't even like. 
talk to him right now. Ask the Lord to forgive your sins. Confess your sins unto him. What you have said, what you have thought, what you have done. Confess your sins unto him. Very important. Confess them right now. Confess them. Ask him for mercy. Ask him to forgive you. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Talk to the Lord. Now thank him for his forgiveness and pray that those who have hurt you will come to know the Lord, that they will surrender their hearts to him. Pray right now. Hallelujah. Talk to the Lord right now. Now ask the Lord to speak to you. Ask the Lord to speak to you today. Ask him to speak to you today. Father, we thank you for your kindness and your mercy. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your provision. You are God and there is none like unto thee. You are faithful and true. We thank you, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we ask that, in, that Lord, in this service and through this service, we would know you more. That you would touch every one of us. We pray that your presence will be manifest wherever this service is participated in. Wherever, Lord, whatever nation, that your presence will be there. And that, Lord, you will stretch forth your hand, confirming your word with signs and wonders, that you will save, heal, and deliver. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And I take authority over every power that will try to hinder this service. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind such evil powers. I destroy them in the mighty name of Jesus. There shall be no interference in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I welcome every one of you to this service. God bless you as you join. And so today I am going to be speaking on do not give excuses for sin. You see, there is a difference between a weakness and a reoccurring sin. There is a weakness. A weakness is not sin, but it is something in a person that makes it easier for him or her to sin. A weakness is an area that has not been fully brought under the control of the Holy Spirit. A weakness is an aspect of your life that you have not fortified against the enemy. It is an aspect of your life that the enemy finds easier to get in. It is an aspect of your life where sin is more likely to occur through. A weakness can be a love for a particular food. It is not a sin, but it makes it easier for sin to get you. And I'm going to show you. A weakness could be uh, uh, this soft spot in your heart for ladies in trouble there are some people that once a lady begins to tell them stories whether true or false but once it looks like she's being oppressed they are so full of zeal to come to her rescue it's a weakness because the enemy can send a lady into your life who will look like someone you are to save only to realize that you are the one who has just falling into a trap and needs saving. That is a weakness. It is not a sin. 
But it is an area in your life that the enemy can uh, come in easier. A weakness could be an excessive love for pets. An excessive love for pets. Do you know there are people that have insulted human beings because of their pets? And let me tell you, it's more common in the Western world. And I want to tell you this. The Bible talks in Romans, it says in Romans chapter 1, that people have made the image of God into the image of four-footed beasts. In other words, people have exalted animals above human life, a human being that is made after the image and likeness of God. There are people that can insult a minister of the gospel, insult their husband, insult their wives, insult a person because of a dog. You may think that makes you a nice fellow, a very loving and caring human being, but it makes you foolish because you have exalted an animal's image above the image of God. Every human being is to be treated with respect because a person is the image of the almighty God. And I tell you this, if you were to tell someone he's crazy for looking at your dog in the wrong way, you have insulted God and you have mocked yourself because you have exalted that animal above the image of God. It's a weakness. Excessive love for pets. Some people would rather save a cat than save a human being. Very unfortunate. But that excessive love can open the door for Satan to get you. Because when he provokes you through that animal or is in a situation that involves that animal, you are more likely to say things that you don't mean. But all the same, you have said it. You can't take those words back. That is a weakness. A weakness could be Such that when you are in an emotional environment, it is easy for you to lost. It could be that when you are listening to blues music, romantic songs, you lose your focus more easily. You are not committing fornication, but when you stay in that environment long enough, the enemy can get you to commit fornication. A lady spoke to me some years ago of someone who lost or rather who had her engagement broken why she she slept with another man i think a day before her wedding and when she was asked how could you be so stupid a day before you are getting married you are sleeping with another man and you get caught she said she was with the guy and the, envir the atmosphere became charged. And she didn't know when it, one thing led to the other. Now, the weakness she had was emotional talk. And common sense would dictate that she should flee from an environment that that weakness would become pronounced. But she stayed there long enough for the weakness to give way to sin. So you may have a weakness. Everyone has a weakness. But it is our duty. It's our job. To ensure that we fortify that weakness. So as not to give the devil room. The Bible says give no place to the devil. A weakness is a place for the devil to operate. So when the Bible says give no place to the devil, the Bible is saying examine yourself, study where you are weak and fortify it. If you know you are weak towards emotional talk by, by men, once you notice that thing is coming, get up and leave. Joseph had a reason why he ran away from Potiphar's wife. He didn't stay there and be macho. 
When he saw her talking, she held onto him and said, it's just the two of us. Joseph ran away, even left his coat and fled. He recognized that that was a, a weak point he needed to get away from. He didn't give room to that weakness. And so he escaped sin. If you know that you are easily provoked to anger, avoid environment and people that could bring about anger in your life. So now we know, the diff we know what a weakness is. A weakness is not sin, but it is something that gives opportunity for sin to happen. Now the Bible says that sin, the wages of sin is death. And so we are to flee sin, avoid sin, avoid sin. The Bible says flee fornication. So we run from fornication. We are to avoid committing sin. We are not to give excuses for sin. Adultery is a sin. It's not a weakness. I have heard of preachers who are sexually immoral and they give excuses for it. Their wives give excuses for it. Their followers give ex excuses saying it's his weakness. It's her weakness. There are people who are Hot tempered. Hot temper is a sin. The Bible says that a man who can't control his temper is foolish. If you have a sin in your life and you have not yet brought it, as in you've not yet brought your flesh under subjection in that aspect, it's going to ruin you. Samson was a man that had the sin of lust. He didn't deal with it. It dealt with him. The Bible says he went to a hall. He still had power to do uh, miracles. He, he lifted the city gates. That's a miracle. He wasn't warned by, by what he was doing. He went for Delilah. A beautiful seductress. And he lost his eyes and his strength. Joseph was with a woman and she was holding on to him and he pushed her away and fled. Samson, the Bible says, laid down on the bed with Delilah. That sin of lust was what brought the, the ministry of Samson to and to a premature end. If you are greedy, deal with it. If you are someone that loves money and flashy things, the Bible says she that lives in pleasure is dead while she lives. So if you are someone that you crave after anything flashy, crave after anything in vogue, you crave attention, deal with it. Don't give excuses. Don't call your sin a weakness and then say it should dwell with you. Because sin that you don't deal with will deal with you. Any sin that you pet will become a monster. Any sin that is your companion will be your destroyer. Any sin. Saul was stubborn, probably was stubborn as a youth. Who knows, people may have rebuked him for it and he said, ah, it's just my weakness, I like to do my, I don't like to be told what to do. When God anointed him king, it was his stubbornness that cut him off from God. God took his Holy Spirit away from Saul. And sent an evil spirit into Saul. What was the reason? First Samuel chapter uh, 15. You see it there. 15 and 16. Chapters 15 and 16. You see this how Saul crashed. Stubbornness. Samuel, prophet Samuel told Saul, King Saul, he said, Stubbornness is as the sin of iniquity. 
It is as the sin of iniquity and idolatry. It is worshipping yourself. So some of you are priding yourself that you are stubborn. You are believing in sin. Let us look at Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. Proverbs 28 verse 13. Those of you who watch on YouTube, I used to go live simultaneously, but of recent, I have not been able to go live at the same time. So, I, I stream the service one hour later than usual on YouTube. So, please bear with me. You notice that the, I don't come live on YouTube until about an hour later. Just bear with me for the time being. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 13. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. And let me tell you, there is any prosperity outside of God is destruction in disguise. So don't categorize prosperity as just having money. The only prosperity outside of God is destruction in disguise because that prosperity is going to make you feel that you are all right, whereas you are not. Anything that assures you that all is well when you are outside of God is destruction waiting to happen. And so... Who, when the Bible is talking about prospering, it's not that you will not have money in your bank account. It's, it is your work with God because you can be the wealthiest person. If you are not right with God, you are very poor in the sight of God. So prospering is walking in the will of God. That's what it is to prosper. You may be broke physically, not having money. In your bank account, you may not have money anywhere. But you are right with God. You are wealthier than that man who has a lot of cars and is not right with God. Because the spiritual is eternal. And when you are right with God, you are getting, you are have, your reward in heaven is piling up. And so, the Bible says, if you do not forsake your sins. If you are covering your sin, giving it excuse. No, it's just a weakness. No, it's just circumstance. It wasn't my fault. The most common way to cover someone's sin is to blame the devil. I think the devil is the most blamed entity in this world. People are caught stealing. They say it was the devil. A man is caught with another woman. He says it was the devil. A woman is caught with another man. She says it was the devil. Look, the devil tempts. You decide what to do. Satan can suggest to you how to mess your life up. If you say yes, it happens. It's your responsibility. If you say no, it's your victory. So you don't blame the devil for your own failures. Blame yourself. Take responsibility. Say, I have messed up. I will fix it. I will get right with God. Stop blaming the devil. The devil can only suggest. If you say no, he can't force his will on you. So when you give excuses for the sins you are committing, you are not going to break free from those sins. You won't break free. But when you call sin, sin, and then you, when I mean call it a sin, you recognize it as something that is against you and against God. You go on your knees and you repent. God will strengthen you to overcome the temptation to commit that sin. God will strengthen you to overcome temptation. When you recognize that it's a sin and you submit unto the Lord, there is a grace the grace of God that is given to you when you ask the Lord to help you overcome a sin. There is a grace. God wants to give you that grace. But until you ask for it sincerely, he can, you can't receive it. So, recognize the difference between a weakness and a sin. And call a sin, sin. 
Hate sin. Hate it because sin hates you. I don't think you will look at poison and say, this poison looks so nice. I like the color. Let me taste it. No matter how appealing sin looks like, recognize that sin is a killer. And any pleasure derived from sin is temporal. And it's a prelude to bitter destruction. A prelude to bitter destruction. Run from it. It may have a temporal pleasure, but there is destruction later. Flee all appearance of evil. Now, I want you to pray and ask the Lord to give you grace to overcome temptation. To give you grace to rise against any, any, any attempt of the enemy to separate you from him. Say, Lord, give me grace to overcome temptation. Pray right now. Ask the Lord to give you grace to overcome temptation. For those of you who are not born again, you have not given your heart to Jesus Christ, this is an opportunity for you right now. I want to pray with you right now. I want to pray with you. Talk to him. Just say, repeat after me or use your own words. You can just say, Lord, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Or you can repeat after me. Let's go. Lord God Almighty, I come to you today. I confess I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins. I accept and confess Jesus Christ, your son, as my Lord and Savior. Fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. Wash my sins away. Keep me holy and righteous till the day I meet you. I thank you, my Father, in Jesus' name. You pray that prayer, you are born again. Every other person, just talk to the Lord. In fact, everyone now, since there are people who have given their lives to Christ, everyone say, Lord, strengthen me against sin. Strengthen my areas of weakness. Strengthen me in my areas of weakness. Let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Let your strength be made perfect in my weakness. Strengthen me in that area where I, I, I have been weak. Pray right now. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to the Lord. Pray. Father, I pray for everyone. I pray, Lord God, that you will strengthen each of us in the areas where we have been weak. That you will show us where we have been weak and strengthen us. Let your strength be made perfect in our weakness. And in the name of Jesus, I break that yoke of sin. I break that yoke of alcoholism off of these ones. Everyone listening to me, watching, under the, connecting to this service, in the name of Jesus, I break every yoke of sin. That sin that easily beats you down. That sin that weakens you up. I break its yoke off of you now in the name of Jesus. I destroy the power of sin in your life. I destroy the power of alcoholism. I destroy the power of gluttony. I destroy the power of pride. I destroy the power of anger. I destroy the power of lust. I destroy the power of pornography. In the name of Jesus, I destroy the power of arrogance. In the name of Jesus, whatever power is working in your life 
bringing about a recurrent sin. I break it off of you now in the name of Jesus. I destroy those yokes right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want you to get your communion bread. This is my bread baked without yeast. You can use fruit juice. This I am using right now is orange juice. You could use any other non-alcoholic drink. Please, not coffee. Don't use coffee. And then if you don't have fruit juice, just get some water. You can use non-alcoholic wine. Now, lift up your bread, which is baked with artists. The Bible says, Jesus speaking, he said, Take, this is my body, which is broken for you. Eat. And then he took the cup, he blessed it after giving thanks and said, Take, drink, this is my blood of the new covenant for the forgiveness, for the remission of sins. That is the erasing of sin from your life. Jesus commanded us, said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. He wants us to do it often and always in remembrance of him. The Bible says that when we take the communion, we proclaim the Lord's death and resurrection. And let me tell you something about proclamation. When you proclaim something, you are invoking the power of that thing. So when you are taking the communion, you are invoking, inviting the resurrection power. You are inviting Jesus Christ to strengthen you in every aspect of your life. You are inviting Jesus Christ to do things in your life that needs to be done, to fix you up. You are inviting Jesus to fill you with his Holy Spirit because the bread of life when we eat it, we never go hungry. Every part of us is filled. Everything you need is found in him. He's your nourishment. Father, I thank you for every communion lifted unto you, the communion bread and the drink. I thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray, Father, that you turn this bread and drink to the body and the blood of Jesus Christ in us. I pray, Lord God, that as we take this communion, everything in our lives that needs fixing, everything that needs replacement, will get it. Whatsoever is broken and damaged in us will be repaired. Whether it's careers, it's relationships, it's finances, it's our work with you. Lord, we pray for nourishment in our spirit, soul, and body. The life of all flesh is in the blood. Let the life of Christ reign in us. We thank you, Father. As we take communion, sickness dies. Health comes in, divine health. As we take communion... We are making progress in our lives. As we take communion, our finances blossom. Our careers move forward. We do well in our careers, in our jobs, our ministries. Things will work for us as we take this communion. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I'm breaking my bread. You take your communion, get your anointing oil ready. Get your anointing oil ready. And please share this video. Please do share the video. Bless people by sharing this video. The Bible says concerning the anointing of the oil. In Psalm 105, touch not my anointing. Do my prophets no harm. The Bible says, by reason of the anointing, the yoke is broken. The Bible says, you love what's right, you despise evil.
Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. There's promotion in the anointing. The Bible says in James chapter 5 that if there's anyone sick amongst you, you should be anointed with oil. And you will recover. So you see what happens when you are anointed. You can be anointed directly with the oil touching your head. And also you can anoint someone's photograph and the power of God will locate that person. You can anoint someone's clothes and the power of God will locate that person. So whether you anoint the person directly or by proxy, the power of God reaches that person because you have used the point of contact. Now lift up your oil. I'm going to pray for your oil as well as mine. Father, I thank you for every oil lifted unto you. I pray that you turn this ordinary oil into holy anointing oil. Oil of gladness, oil of consecration and separation. Lord, according to your word, let protection, prosperity, favor, healing, deliverance because your word says by reason of the anointing the yokes are broken the deliverance come upon everyone according to their need every one of us as we are anointed we thank you in jesus name amen i receive it in jesus name thank you for participating in this service thank you for sharing this video Thank you, and God bless you. I'll leave my WhatsApp, Telegram, and Signal number, and my email. You can reach me. I do receive messages, and I respond to them. And uh, this is the number I am using at this time. Plus 234 70 Six, eight. I'll call it again. Plus two, three, four, seven, zero, three, 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 four, three, six, eight. For those in Nigeria, you don't need to add plus two, three, four because that is a country code. Just go, just put zero there. Now my email, David Ibona Ministries at gmail dot com. David Ibona Ministries. Plural, David Ibona Ministries at gmail.com. I'm going to spell my name Ibona A I G B O N A. Now I'm going to do it A I G B B as in for ball O N as in for now as in for night. A A I G B O N A. May Yahweh bless you and keep you. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May Yahweh lift up his countenance.